Hi guys, um, I'm just gonna, this video is, um, I'm gonna try and walk you through every line of code in the sine wave example that's on the P5 um, uh, uh, reference website. Um, so just make sure that you've watched the video that I did last week on um, animating uh, sign on animating on a sine curve because um, that'll just form the basis of this. I'm not going to go into what the sine function does. I'm just going to go into how you can um, make it into a wave. Um, so the the whole example, um, the whole code is here on, on the reference website. I'm also going to upload it to the course GitHub as well because I've made a few changes to it. To, I've added some comments. Um, so basically what I've done is copy and pasted all of this um, and then commented it up and now I'm going to walk you through every line so that, that you can understand it and maybe um, use it and or change it to suit your purposes. So um, if you are going to use it you just need to make sure that in the code you just reference this um, Daniel Schiffman um, and the P5 website and just say it's adapted from that, that code. Um, so here's, here's what I've done. Um, I've just tightened up the the gap between the um, dots there, um, but um, I'm just going to walk you through here all the lines of code. So first things that we're going to do is set up some variables. Okay, so um, the first variable is the x spacing. So this is the distance between each horizontal location. So if I just make that 20, and go back here, we can see that 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 x spacing variable is the gap between these little balls that are going up and down. Yeah. Um, the This w variable is going to be the width of the entire wave, so that is basically this whole, the width of the canvas. Um, we're not setting that yet, we'll set it in the setup. Um, theta is, um, it's basically a word for angle, um, so in mathematics they use theta, so it's usually used to describe an angle. So this is, if you watched our sign um, animation, video, uh, if you watch that you'll know what that is, That's I called that counter. So it's just an increment um, uh, every time the draw function runs. Um, so we'll start that at zero. The amplitude is the height of the wave, that's pretty self-explanatory, so that is how high it is from the middle line. So I think it's 75 pixels high, so it goes 75 pixels up and it goes 75 pixels down. Um, the period is how many pixels before the wave repeats. So that is the sort of distance between here when it's at the bottom and the same, the circle that's exactly the same um, along here. So that is set to 500 for the moment. Um, dx is a value that we're going to use within our um, calculating within one of our functions. That's a value with which we will increment the x. So you'll, that'll become apparent in a second. Y values is an array that we're going to use to store every single, because this this pitch, this wave is every time the draw function runs it draws out however many circles, I don't know, a hundred, um, it um, and we have a different y position for every one of those, you know, an x position that's set, it just goes up and down, but we have a different y position for every single one. So we are creating an array here, we, we will create an array called y values and we'll store all our information in there. Circle width is the width of the circle. Um, these values here I'll get to in a second. I just put those in because I want to show you how you can change the curve. So let's just ignore those for a second. Um, and let's go into the setup function. So in the setup function here we'll create our canvas. We'll set what the width of the, what the, width of the um, entire wave is. And we're going to use the, um, P, uh, the P5 variable width that is the width of the canvas and we're going to add 16 pixels. Um, I'm not sure why he did that. Um, that's from Daniel Schiffman's code. I, I think it's probably just to get, it's, it, it looks like it was probably one pixel, one circle width bigger than the width of the canvas. So I suppose that just means that it runs right to the end of the canvas. Um, this dx, so this is a value which we, with which we'll increment the x value inside our calc, calc wave function. Now, don't worry too much about that for the moment. Um, basically, it comes out at something like, so 2pi is what, 6.2 6 
0.28 or something um, divided by the period that we've set up here. So that's 500 divided by 500 um, equals um, 0 0.28. One two, um, and then times by our spacing, uh, zero point two five. So it comes out at about zero point two five currently. Um, basically, this is the um, this is how we'll increment every time so to get a different y value from our sine our our sine function. Okay, so I'm not quite sure why he's used that particular. Um, uh, calculation to, to get to a number. Uh, it's possible you could just write in an increment and get it right. Um, so uh, you can experiment with that or you can leave it exactly how it is. I don't think you really need to change it. Um, here we're going to set up our array with the right amount of spots in it. So we're creating an array and this floor function is just a maths function that gives us a, a, um, a an absolute value without any um, without any decimals in it, um, of the width here, the width of our wave, divided by the spacing. So it just creates enough spaces. It just creates, it just tells us how many circles are going to be drawn, basically. So that will pump out a number that's sort of the right amount. Yeah, so maybe it ends up being 500 or something, I don't know, uh, or 100. Right, so we've set up... That's every line in the setup function. Now we'll just get to the draw function. The draw function is pretty simple because it has these um, these functions within it. So um, every time we draw, we're going to draw a background. We're going to calculate all our new y values, and then we're going to draw our circles out. So calc wave will calculate all our y values, and render wave will draw out all the circles. Um, so let's go into those functions. So the first one is the calc wave function. Um, so here we are going to increment the theta value. So that just increments the angle um, that we every time we run this. Um, so every time the draw function runs this this calculation, you'll get a different um, you'll get a different curve, basically a slightly incremented curve. So for every x value, we're going to calculate our y value. Um, so in other words, for every dot, we're going to get our new y value. We're going to let x be the new theta value to start with. Um, and then we're going to loop through all our y values, our array with all the right, the right number of spots, so the right number of circles. And we're going to set a y value inside that array. So here's the equation to get it, which is the sine, sine function um, uh, with x as the, as the angle. Um, times by the amplitude, which is the, is the height of our wave. Okay, because that sine function will return a value between minus one and one, um, and then we'll times it by our amplitude, which is um, 75 pixels at the moment. So, um, and then we just want to increment the x value so that the next time this loop runs, you get a slightly different position for the y. So every time the loop runs, we get a new position. Yeah. Um, alrighty, we might actually just say, I wonder if this will work. Okay, yeah. So um, I've just run it once in the setup function, so it's just giving us all the y values. Yeah, so you can see that it's, um, so it's just a bit easier to see that every time this loop runs, we get a new value for y. So we get a slight new value for y depending on the sine function times by our amplitude. Okay, so every time, so this, what this, this calc wave function is doing is calculating that y value. So now we're just calculating it once in the setup. So it's going to be, it's positioned exactly there. Yeah. Um, anyway, hopefully that helped you slightly. Maybe it didn't. Um, let's move on. Got to move in again. Okay. Um, next is the render wave function. So this is just what will our circle look like? No stroke and a fill of two five five. So it's a white fill, no stroke. And then we're going to loop through. These are just. I'll just delete those. Um, then we're going to loop through every value in our in our array, and we're going to draw a circle for every y value at every at every x position. So we're going to have a different x position 
incremented slightly and we're going to have a y position that's incremented slightly on the sine curve. So here we go, we're going to draw every circle at the x um, spacing distance which is 16 pixels at the moment. Um, we need to add half the height of the canvas to the y position so that the curve appears in the center. Yeah, otherwise it would appear up there and you'd only see the bottom half of it. Um, and we are going to use this, we're going to make it the circle width um, big. Yeah. Um, right, so that's just the render wave function. So that, um, hopefully that sort of helped you understand what every line of code is doing. And now I just think I'll just show you what um, you can do with this wave because I know a few of you are trying to use it to make it go faster and then slower. So what I've done is I've just written this function that on mouse pressed, um, I won't go into this function, but basically on mouse pressed, I just swap some values out. So when we first start, the values are 75 and 500, but in, then for the amplitude, which is the height of the wave, and the period, which is how long before it repeats. And these are the things you can change to make the curve look different. So here you can see that I've, I've set, when you click the first time, um, we change the wave just by changing that amplitude and period. Amplitude, period, and we get a few different waves. So this one's a very steep, fast wave, um, and this one's a very slow wave. And that steep fast wave is probably not so good because you can't really tell it's a wave, but what you could do is you could change the distance between the dots to 10 and then you sort of see it as a wave a bit, bit easier. Yeah. Um, if you wanted to, you could go one step further and use these points, these x, y points as points on a vector, but I don't think that's, I think that's a bit advanced for you guys and well, it's too advanced for me right this second. Uh, I'd need to work out how to do that, uh, but it's probably achievable. Um, uh, but I don't think you really need to. I think you can probably go somewhere with these just using these dots. Um, I also just want to show you that you can, you know, if you change, you get quite different, quite different effects if you change very small things. So suddenly we're looking at a much smaller wave, and suddenly that wave looks a bit, a bit better because we've shrunk the circles. Um, you could change these fills to, um, we, could, we could actually make the stroke. We could outline the dots. Um, stroke two five five no fill. Let's make it a bit bigger. Why is that not working, everybody? <laughs> oh. There you go. So suddenly you've got circles, and that's like a different effect in itself. Um, you could um, you could make these massive, and then suddenly you're looking at a very different sort of looking thing, but still quite nice looking in its own right. Um, you could also do something with the background, you could maybe make the background transparent, I'm not really sure what this is going to look like. This might look really crazy. Mm. Uh, wow, a fade. <laughs> Let's split these up to see what's going on here. Um, oh yeah, it's fading because we're drawing it quite a few times. I don't know. <laughs> oh, there we go. That's sort of interesting looking, isn't it? Maybe we should make the even more transparent. Oh, look. That's cool. That's very current, isn't it? Anyway, there you go. There's lots of things you can do just by changing some very small values. I uh, hope that helps, um, and I'm going to leave it there for now.